So now we've taken a look at how airlines create fare structures and we reviewed our basic elasticity concepts and now we can take a look at how airlines go about choosing the actual fare levels that you see in the marketplace. So recall from one of our earlier videos we had a demand curve that looked uh, like this. We had three different price levels and those represented the fares in the market and we said that you know having more than one fare in the market actually increased revenue now we're going to go and look at how do airlines actually choose these price levels so for p1 p2 and p3 what are the actual fares um, that are um, uh, that you see in the market well there's two generally two circumstances where airlines are setting fares one is the day-to-day -day pricing that's definitely the lion's share of the activity um, but the other is when an airline is first entering a market and that's really when they are choosing the fares all the day-to-day -day activity is just incremental changes to fares that already exist so first we're going to look at when an airline is entering a new market how do they choose those initial fare levels so maybe they have eight fares in the market where do those fares come from well to understand where those fares come from you have to understand a little bit about how airlines uh, choose new markets to begin with and the pricing decision is part and parcel of that analysis so when airline planning departments are looking at new markets to enter they're doing that with an eye toward the the pricing environment they want to understand before they they decide on a market what fares they can get and if those fares will result in a profit to the airline so let's say um, let's take an example market um, let's say uh, oops sorry let me get back to I'm not sure what I did there okay oh better okay let's just say we're going to use uh, my favorite market because I live in New York JFK Miami there's nothing nothing special about this market that makes this example work but just to have something a uh, particular market <clears throat> so let's say um our airline is we are airline al airline one and airline one is looking for new markets to enter and they have their eye on jfk miami well there's two ways they can enter that market two two fair strategies they can use uh when entering that market so the first thing they will do is they'll take a look at the market size so let's choose a market size here and we're just going to say this circle represent the market size and then um, we're going to say there's I think I'll say there's three airlines already in the market okay three airlines and we'll just say they're divvying up the market um, by some by some combination of market share here so let's say uh, let's say where airline one let's say oops choose a different pen here uh, airline two has this market share airline three has this market share oops um sorry airline three has this market share and airline four has this market share okay so there's three airlines in the market airline one is looking at this market and trying to decide whether they should enter that market and of course their decision is can i make money in that market so one thing they will look at is are the airlines that are already in that market making money and if so are there excess profits so can airline one come in and take some of the profits so in other words take some of the share and uh, the other airlines would become less profitable but altogether all of the airlines would um, still make money so one thing they could do is say let's say we um, let's choose a let's write this circle again so the market are really this is supposed to be the exact same size so that's that's important even if it's not pretend it is so let's say airline one comes in and says okay uh there's th oh, sorry let me do that again there are three airlines in the market already we are going to come in and we're going to split the pie now into four shares so three airlines were sharing the market now there are four airlines sharing the market so we'll just write in here um, one two three four so if this is the case so if the airline one just wants to come in 
and take some of the market share from the other carriers that are already there. And they can do that given the prevailing fares that these airlines are charging, then, then that is their fare structure. They just look, you know, it's very likely that these airlines already have the same fares. Um, they're all charging the same fares in the market. So airline one would come in, look at these fare structures, determine if they could make money at those fare levels by taking some share away from those other airlines. Now, of course, they're going to they're gonna have to estimate what kind of demand they can get uh, at those fare levels, but it's fairly simple, right? You don't need a lot of elasticity or math here. You know the market size, and you know the capacity share of each airline. If airline one comes in with 25% of the capacity, then they're probably, and they don't change the fares, they're probably going to get 25% of the volume, and they can easily calculate at 25% of the volume at the prevailing fares whether they can make money or not. So that's one thing they might do is just come into a market, an existing established market where airlines are making money, and um, they feel that they can come in and um, uh, charge the prevailing rate and make money as well. Now, now, uh, it, these airlines don't necessarily have to be making money for airline one to want to enter this market. Airline one may have a lower cost structure and be able to make money where uh, these airlines uh, are, are unable to. Um, but, um, you know, either way, this is one fair strategy, which is just come in and take the prevailing fares. Okay, so that's one. The other is what you see a lot of times in today's marketplace, which is um, the low cost carrier effect. So whether it's uh, in the U.S. Spirit or Southwest or in Europe, it's Ryanair or EasyJet. These airlines have a different view of coming into markets, right? They don't look at the, well, they do look at the market size, but they don't look at the prevailing fare structure and decide whether they can make money at those fare structures. They're coming in with lower costs, right? So if if airline, let's say it's airline, I don't know, five, five airline with uh, a low cost carrier, and they're looking at this market, it's still JFK Miami, and they see there are three airlines in here. So we're going to use the same market. Uh, so it starts out with three airlines in here and they look at this market and they say yeah we would like to enter this market but we're not going to just come in at these prevailing fares maybe we have a different product we're going to come in and we're going to lower the fare so let's say they um let's draw this circle again now they're going to come in and they're going to lower the fare and they're look, going to look at the elasticity in the market, right? They're going to make some estimate of elasticity. And they're going to determine if they lower the fare, will the market grow significantly enough so that when they take their share of the bigger size market, if they can make money. So now you're going to have four carriers in the market. Uh, this is airline five, right? So we're going to say this is airline two, three, four and now airline five. So airline five is coming in, they're lowering the fares, and they're increasing the size of the market and taking their share of the bigger size market. So airline two, three, and four may have the same market size that they did before, but they're gonna, they're gonna have a lower fare level than they did before and a lower uh, total revenue than they did before because the low car cost carrier comes in and decreases the fare. So that's their fare strategy. Um, now they're going to have to come in and um, choose fare levels that result in the market size that they need in order to be profitable at the at these lower fares. And that's where the elasticity is going to come in. And I'm not going to go through any calculations because it's um, it's somewhat of a guessing game, really. So they they can see some elasticity by looking at the data. Um, one of the difficult things that uh, this new carrier has to do is they have to determine what the market response will be at fare levels that may have not been seen in this market before, right? So maybe the lowest fare is um, the uh, current, uh, let's see, the current, current fare, the lowest fare is um, $100, and the low cost carrier, the LCC, comes in and lowers that to uh, $69. Well, they may intuitively know that 
at this lower fare, this market will grow. But since this market hasn't seen that fare before, there's no data to estimate elasticity. So they are going more by um, looking at different data sources and some intuition to try to determine whether this market will respond to the lower fares in a manner that they, they need for um, the uh, airline to be profitable. And this is not an easy thing. I mean, you can see you can see this in markets all over the world. The low car cost carriers will come in, the lower fares, and in many cases, the market will respond very favorably and the market size will grow and the volumes will pick up. Sometimes they come into markets and they just miss, uh, they um, uh, underestimate the response of the market. They come in, they lower fares, so they might lower fares by 10%. But the market size grows by less than 10 percent. So the overall elasticity of the market was inelastic. And remember from our, our review of elasticity, if the market is inelastic and you lower fares by a certain percent, the quantity demanded increases by less than that percent and total revenue goes down. So what that means to an individual carrier is 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 related to that individual carrier structure. But the um, the new carrier coming in is generally going to want the the market to respond in an elastic manner so that it grows sufficiently enough so they're they're not getting in market share games with with these existing carriers but so that the new market is big enough so that they can take their you know what their fair share or their capacity share and make money at those new levels